Cassini dives and Falcon 9 launches. Stay tuned, K News begins right now! Hi, I'm Lucas and that line was totally not stolen from TMRO. Welcome to K News for week 17, which actually means one third of this year is already behind us. I'm not sure if it's just me, but that was ridiculously fast. Speaking of fast, the spacecraft Cassini, which is orbiting Saturn, has begun with its last set of orbits before it will plunge into the gas giant in September. There will be 22 in total, in which Cassini will zip past Saturn's surface, or clouds for that matter, ranging from 5000 down to 1000 km of altitude. However, this altitude is in no way comparable to Earth's. Saturn is almost 100 times more massive, but it is huge. These 1000 km from the clouds translate to an altitude of 45000 km if it was Earth. That's far beyond a geosynchronous orbit. This is important to understand the speeds at which Cassini is orbiting because it reaches 30 km per second at its periapsis, which is fast relative to speeds here on Earth, but still relatively modest considering Saturn's mass. If it had a surface you could stand on just below the clouds, the gravity acceleration would actually be similar to that on Earth. Anyways, if you want to know more about Cassini and its mission, I can highly recommend an interview with JPL's Lisa Tetchy on the web show TMRO or Tomorrow. She is a spacecraft engineer and has a lot and I really mean a lot of great inside info to share. Seriously guys, if you have an hour, watch it. I will put a link to that in the description. But speaking of tomorrow, SpaceX will launch another Falcon 9 on Sunday at 1100 UTC, if everything goes according to plan of course. Falcon 9 is powered by 9 million engines mounted on the so-called OctaWeb, where Octa stands for 8 plus the engine in the center. The OctaWeb is also where the landing legs attach and there are 4 of them in total. The grid fins up top are used to control the booster once it has separated from the upper stage, which in this case carries a top secret satellite for the US National Reconnaissance Office called Enroll 76. One thing to keep an eye on this time are the fairings. SpaceX is currently doing experimental recoveries and they have successfully landed one already. They haven't officially shared any details yet, but I've heard they want to land them on an inflatable bouncy castle out in the ocean to avoid them getting wet. If that is true, I really hope we will soon see a video of that. After liftoff, it will take the rocket a little over 1 minute to reach transonic speeds and the highest load on the vehicle. At 2 minutes and 17 seconds, the main engines will cut off, which is quite early. In fact, it almost burns 30 seconds less than a typical mission to a geosynchronous transfer orbit. That means the satellite is either very light and the Falcon gets up to speed faster, or it will only be pushed to a low Earth orbit by the upper stage. However, it's a secret mission and orbit details are kept secret, so I could imagine the complete schedule being made up, but then they could have also simply released none. So at this point my guess is it will be a LEO mission and the booster will return to the launch site, but I could be wrong. After separation, the second stage will ignite, delivering the payload to its desired orbit. The booster will meanwhile turn around and do a burn to reverse its trajectory back to land. This means the maneuver will have to get rid of all the speed it has built up horizontally and accelerate backwards. It is a lot, but since the booster is incredibly light at this point, it needs much less fuel than in the beginning. The tanks are drained and there is no heavy upper stage and payload up top. A few more minutes in, at now 7 minutes and 9 seconds, the booster will do a short re-entry burn to then land at SpaceX landing zone near the launch pad. As mentioned, this is speculative and it could also land on the drone ship, of course I still love you. Meanwhile, the fairings will also have splashed down and the upper stage will be on its way to achieve a stable orbit. At an unknown time into the flight, probably after the stream has ended, the payload will get released and Falcon's upper stage might also perform a burn to make itself re-enter. That is at least done on regular missions to low Earth orbit, but that highly depends on how much fuel it will have left. Rocket engines, especially the turbo pump, cannot simply run dry. There are some legal requirements on the amount of fuel which has to be left when the engine shuts down. This remaining fuel gets then typically vented out into space, forming a huge cloud for a few seconds which can look quite spectacular during sunset. Ok, that shall conclude episode 82 and I hope to see you next one if you like. Auf Wiedersehen and thank you for watching.